So what we're going to do here is we're going to go through a series of tests utilizing those display groups that I talked about. The three display groups we're interested in in this particular case for testing both our O2 sensors and our catalytic converter are going to be display group 0, 3, 4. That's going to allow us to force readiness test the front O2 sensor. We're going to look at that O2 sensor's response time and determine does it respond quickly enough and within the proper range. If it does, the sensor is working fine. If it doesn't, we've got a problem with the sensor. We're going to go ahead and utilize group 043. 043 tests the rear O2 sensor. Same situation. It's going to tell us whether the sensor is responding properly and within the proper range at the proper speed. Once we validated the front and the rear O2 sensor function, then we can utilize the onboard diagnostics through the Pegasus to validate the conversion rate of the catalytic converter. We can actually do a force test on catalyst efficiency. That display group is going to be 046. 046 allows us to test the catalytic converter and determine if the catalytic converter is working properly or not. So once again, to do the proper testing here, we're going to utilize the strengths of the tool and the information we have available to determine what's going on. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to do this test in what's called a, mo a mode that's called on Volkswagen's basic setting mode. Basic setting mode is really important. Volkswagen utilizes two different modes. The first mode is what's known as function 08. That's data stream mode and that allows you to pull or observe data stream. Function 04 or basic settings is the bi-directional mode. Now we use function 04 to energize or allow for the bi-directional communication between the scan tool and the powertrain control module or quite frankly any controller that, that we happen to be working on and that allows us now to make commands or make demands of the onboard systems on the vehicle. Now why is this important? Well this allows us once again to access the features I was talking about. What we're going to do here is we're going to go into basic setting because if you recall back on our hotline archive we had Step number two, to test the front and the rear O2 sensors utilizing a compatible scan tool. Well, the Pegasus is a 100% fully compatible scan tool. We can go in and utilize the data and go ahead and force the testing utilizing basic setting mode. So we've got all of the power uh, in our fingertips to do this job. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into basic setting mode and we're going to force this O2 sensor, front O2 sensor test. Now notice what we're doing is we're going to select basic settings and once we get into basic settings we're going to go ahead and enter our display group and as I said before the display group we're interested in here is display group 0, 3, 4 and once we've entered 0, 3, 4 we're ready to begin testing. Now, what we're going to do now is start the vehicle. This particular display group requires that the vehicle is running. This is important. Some display groups, when you're in basic setting, require the vehicle to be key on, engine off. Okay? Some of the display groups require the vehicle to be running or may actually require some other actions. This is a, a, a case in this, in, in this uh, situation. What we're going to do here is, once again, once we get the vehicle running, we're in basic setting mode, we're in display group 34, now we're going to start the test. We press the start button, the test is now started. Now, we're going to wait until the system has hand shook and we have data on the screen. This is key because we're actually going to be accelerating this vehicle utilizing a special mode. Alright, now the tool is ready to go ahead and add in the special feature, as I said before, that we need to do. In this particular case, what we have to do is to put this into test mode, we're going to need to apply the brake and then apply the accelerator. Now, before you do that, Steve, this is really important. Whenever you're doing this type of test on a Volkswagen, it is critical that you always remember the following things. If it's asking you to apply the brake and the accelerator pedal simultaneously, start by applying the brake then apply the accelerator pedal slowly. In most cases, once the brake is activated, you will need to push the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor to activate wide open throttle. That will bring the vehicle up to the appropriate RPM to activate the test. This is important because Volkswagens have a tendency to have faulty brake switches. If you happen to push down on the brake and the brake switch does not send a signal and you push down on the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor rapidly, what you're going to do is accelerate to wide open throttle. 
So we want to be careful when we make this acceleration. So Steve, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go ahead and push down on the brake pedal. And as soon as you get the brake pedal pushed down, go ahead and gently push the accelerator pedal towards the floor. And you'll see that once this gets to the floor, and there it is, now we've entered test mode. What's going to happen here is if you watch the screen, our engine RPM is going to be up around 1800 to 2000 RPM. That's our critical speed for doing the test. As the temperature increases on the catalytic converter, that's a calculated catalyst temperature, as the temperature increases on the catalytic converter, once everything appears to be at the correct temperature range, the system is going to automatically enrich in and in lean the mixture and observe the response time of the front O2 sensor. The response time of that front O2 sensor here is critical. It not only has to respond in the proper amount of time, in other words, it has to sweep, but it also has to sweep at the correct value. If it does not sweep far enough or it does not respond quick enough, what we're going to run into is we're going to run into a faulty O2 sensor. Now, if you look at the fourth field as displayed on the screen, the fourth field is going to talk about the test status. And you'll notice right now the test status is off. Now, if everything is working normally and the O2 sensor is at least partially operational, what should happen after about 90 seconds is that fourth field should change from test off to test on. Once it changes to test on, we know it's entered full test mode and now it's performing the test on the front O2 sensor. All right? After approximately 90 seconds, when that fourth field reads test on, it should complete the test and return with a value. The value is either going to say O2 sensor bank one sensor one okay or O2 sensor bank one sensor one not okay. We've had the vehicle running now for approximately two minutes and you may have noticed that we're not getting any kind of a state change on this test. Now that tells us something right there. If the test never initiates that can tell us that what we may be dealing with here is an O2 sensor that's completely flatlined or operating extremely slowly. Once again, the test will not run if the sensor is so badly fouled or so bad that it cannot uh, respond to a rich or lean condition. And that's exactly what we may have going here. Remember the situation that we had on this car. This car has had multiple problems. We've had a known bad mass airflow sensor on it. Now obviously if we've got a bad mass airflow sensor, we could have gone one of two directions. We could have been uh, running the car excessively rich for a long period of time, or we could have been running the car excessively lean for a long period of time. In both of those cases, we could potentially have O2 sensor problems. All right. The other problem that we had is a throttle body problem. With a throttle body problem, once again, we could have a rich or lean condition. All of these things difficult or hard on O2 sensors. Not only that, this is a 2004 vehicle with over 100,000 miles on it. At 100,000 miles, the O2 sensor is going to be contaminated and slow operating just simply because of wear and tear on the sensor. So with all of those things together, when I see a test that fails to initialize, I'm thinking I very likely got a faulty O2 sensor. But remember again, I've talked about this sensor in terms of it being a wideband sensor, meaning that it's going to be an expensive sensor. So I'm not going to condemn the sensor just based on this piece of information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize once again the power of the Pegasus scan tool to go in and get additional information that'll tell me, do I actually have an issue going on with this O2 sensor? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Steve, Steve, why don't we go ahead and run some additional tests. You got any ideas of where we might want to go here? Sure, let me quit this test. Why don't we do this? We know that the O2 sensor failed the test. Unfortunately, Volkswagen's OE data won't give us that amperage switch that we need to look at in data stream. So let's go back to Global OBD2, go to data stream there, and look for the front O2 sensor and watch for the switch rate. Sounds good. And that's an important piece of information to have in your, in your mental toolbox here. All right. Even though Volkswagens have a tremendous amount of features that we can access with the Pegasus, on occasion, to get the information that we're looking at, we've got to think a little bit outside of the box and not only utilize what's available on the car as far as Volkswagen factory testing, but remember that OBD2 tests are still very valid, very valuable, and can give us the information we need to condemn an expensive part. So Steve's going to go ahead and he's going to go into Global OBD2 and we're going to go ahead and access the information on this front O2 sensor to determine is this front O2 sensor responding the way it should be responding. If it's responding properly, all right, at that point we're going to go on and do further testing. If it's not responding properly, well we've got an answer or a pretty good idea of what direction we may want to go on this vehicle.